In this video, I want to show you how using my fuel system pressure tester solves some annoying performance problems in a couple of these old engines that run on Bosch CIS fuel injection. Now I want you to hear how well this engine runs. You're going to be hard pressed to find a KJetronic V8 engine that starts and runs as smoothly as the one in this 380SL. I'm overjoyed how well my new version fuel pressure tester is working. Absolutely no leaks, easy to hook up. You know, it was about three years ago that I set out on the goal to try to build and provide a fuel system pressure tester like this that didn't leak, that was accurate and easy to understand and easy to hook up to the engine. What I want to do in this video is just show you a few tips how you can hook this up and prevent problems. This is obviously something you can do yourself. I'm getting ready to do a fuel system pressure test. We're going to be hooking up the gauges to a couple fittings here and we want to make sure there's not a lot of pressure in the fuel distributor. You're going to have fuel spraying all over the place. One of the quick ways to determine if you do have pressure in the system is to push down on this plate right here. And you'll actually feel back pressure. You may even get a little squeaking noise. But this engine has sat overnight. I'm pushing down and I'm not getting any back pressure. So there's probably very little fuel pressure. But even then, I'm going to take a precaution when I disconnect this fitting right here. Notice I've taken a rag and I've shoved it up here. This is going to collect any type of fuel that's going to drip out of here. If you do push down on this plate and there's a lot of pressure, you're going to have to be really careful. Let's see now how much drippage we got. This engine has sat overnight. I'm going to loosen this fitting right here. Once you get this backed out, you can, <laughs> it's really tight because you have the, these two lines here. This is why I include the thin 14 millimeter wrench in my full kit. It's fairly easy to hook up to a K-Jetronic fuel system, but this right here is kind of a pain. You can do this without a thin wrench, but <laughs> I guarantee you, you're going to wish you had it when you get done. All right, look at that. See, almost no fuel. I don't even get any wetness on the rag. So that's your tip right there. You know, check this first before you remove this line on your K-Jetronic engine. So this is the second tip I want to share with you, and it's about this plastic bottle that I include in the kit. Do not use this tester without this plugged in. I'll tell you why. It's really easy if you're holding the gauge like this to accidentally hit the button, or if you drop it down, the button can go off. Now look what happens when you hit the button. I've already pressurized the system. Look at how much fuel that you're getting into this bottle. Look at that. That's how much fuel it took right now to depressurize the system. We had just shut it off a couple minutes ago. So this is a big safety issue here. Do not test without this bottle plugged into this line. Because if you accidentally push that valve, you're going to have fuel spraying all over a hot running engine. I just ran the engine and full system fuel pressure is spot on, couldn't be better. And the next thing you want to do is, of course, shut the engine off and then we're going to watch and see if this gauge leaks down. 
Now, there's a number of reasons why you could be losing pressure rapidly. You know, you're going to lose it overnight, but people will always say, oh, check the check valves, oh, the accumulator, oh, this, that. You'll hear this all over the forums and the Internet. But here is a way to figure out whether the problem is in the engine that's leaking pressure or it's back at the fuel delivery system. Now, watch what happens when I break the line going to the coal start injector. A leaky coal start injector will cause your engine to run rich and it will also leak down immediately after you shut the engine off if you're doing a pressure test. Watch the gauge. I'm just going to break this. You have to be careful. You're in high pressure. I've got my safety goggles on. I'm going to use the rag and I'm just going to turn this a quarter of a turn. Okay, look at that. Then I'm going to wiggle the line. Look at what's happening to my pressure. Now the accumulator is putting it back up, so I'm going to open it back up a little bit more. This also lets me know the accumulator is working, see? All right, so we're going to just see what happens. Look what happens if you have a leaking cold start injector, and the same thing could happen if you have leaking fuel injectors. Now if I tighten that up, you see that accumulator is holding pressure at the fuel delivery system. So that's a real good sign you have a strong accumulator as well. So I hope those clips encouraged you and helped you realize you could do this yourself. And I cannot stress enough that you have to have one of these fuel system pressure testers if you're gonna work on these old Mercedes fuel injected engines, particularly the K-Jet Tronic with the warm-up rigger. <laughs> That's number one. You'll be chasing your tail forever trying to figure out why your engine doesn't run right if you don't have one of these fuel system pressure testers. And I have full videos in my kit that walk you through the procedures on all these systems. Now, I want to take you to a 300E that's having a really hard time starting, and I'm going to share with you how easy it was to determine what the problem was using my fuel system pressure tester. The pressure tester is hooked up properly. I've double checked all the fittings, and now I'm going to start the fuel pump. I don't need to turn the engine on to get this test. I can just run the fuel pumps. And what we're looking for is full system pressure. What do we got? Okay, let's take a look. It should be between 75 to 80 pounds or 5.3 to 5.5 bars. Look at that. It couldn't be better. Now, if the pressure's low, that means our pumps are worn out or maybe the fuel filter is partially plugged. And I don't think that's the problem with this engine. Now I'm going to turn the pumps off and let's see what happens to the gauge. Okay, notice that. It drops right down. The manual states that this should stay at about 30 pounds for 30 minutes. So I'm going to look at my watch now. Look at that. It is 335. So we're going to come back at 405 and take a look. Or if it drops down sooner, we'll come back and report in. Looks like we didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I only had to wait five. Take a look at the gauge. Almost all the way down to zero. Now this gives us a clue why the owner has to crank so much in the morning to get this thing started or when the engine's cold. There could be uh, two or three things that could be wrong causing the pressure to drop off so quickly. The owner told me he put new fuel pumps and a new fuel filter on. He did not change the accumulator. It could be check valves and that's true if these check valves which are located right here are not closing off, the fuel's going to leak back and you're going to have to crank, crank, crank to get it started. It could be something in the engine compartment like leaking fuel injectors. But because of the history, and this is why when you troubleshoot, you want to think about the history, look at what's been done, and look at paperwork and see what's been replaced. So at least for now, I'm going to eliminate the check valves. <laughs> but I'm not going to totally forget about them. And the reason is you can always get a bad new part, okay? So I'm going to focus on the accumulator. You just take this hose off and see if it's leaking. Well, you have to be really careful, particularly on the 300E. Notice this hose is running horizontally. So you have fuel coming out of the tank, and fuel is already filling this hose. 
So if you cut the hose and say, oh, it's leaking fuel, and you assume that the accumulator is bad, you can be fooled. You want to make sure that the fluid is leaking out of the accumulator. It should not be leaking out of this side. There's a diaphragm in here, and once that ruptures, then the fuel can just leak right back down here. Here's the old accumulator. <laughs> and when we removed this, <laughs> It was absolutely full of fuel. We just tipped this up and it kept draining and draining and draining and draining. We were able to do this with probably less than a cup of fuel spill. Okay, now I think we're ready to test again. You know, it's gonna take a while, maybe, maybe, maybe not to get it started, but we're back to zero here and I'm gonna have my friend, get in the car and crank, and let's see how this starts now. Oh, wow. All right, let's call that 10 minutes, okay? Look. Unbelievable. It hasn't even lost one pound, maybe 0.25 PSI. That's all it's lost in 10 minutes. So I don't need to wait 30 minutes. You're going to know within 10 minutes if there's a problem with pressure leaking back. So we've solved this problem. Okay, you got to see that? <laughs> Pretty easy, wasn't it? I offer two versions of my CIS fuel injection pressure tester. This is December of 2025. So if you're watching this video in the future, be, be sure and check out my website to see if there's any updates to this. But I offer this in two versions or two kits. This is the basic kit. This is the deluxe kit. The basic tester right here is the same, except the deluxe kit has a liquid fill gauge and the basic kit has a standard gauge. That's to keep the price down. And we do test these gauges. So you're gonna know you're getting an accurate gauge even when you buy the basic kit that you see here. Now in the deluxe kit, I offer a number of extras. You can see here that the fittings that attach the tester to the engine are the same in both kits. But in the deluxe kit, I offer some fittings that will allow you to test DJetronic fuel injection systems from 1970 up to 1975. I also offer this thin 14 millimeter wrench. You'll see me using this in a number of my videos. This is very handy to have when you're working with these fittings. I give you a jumper lead so you can jump the fuel pump relay on some models to get the pumps to run and do the test without the engine running. And then finally, in the deluxe kit, I include a pair of safety glasses. I recommend that you wear safety glasses. You're dealing with fuel under high pressure. You want to take some precautions, do the test outside, have a fire extinguisher handy. And right here, you're going to see in my newest version, I now attached fuel capture bottles to the tester before I even ship it. And this will allow you, during the test or after the test, you can release pressure here in the system. Fuel is going to flow right into this bottle. And then you can disconnect it from the engine. Rather than trying to find some container, or worse yet, like happened to me, you're, you're probably thinking, well, Kent, why did you come up with this idea? Well, one time I was testing and I accidentally bumped that button while the engine was running, and fuel comes spraying out of here. <laughs> How do you think I felt about that? So that's why I came up with capture bottles and now both testers have these permanently attached. And then finally, with the deluxe kit, you get my full complement of videos on how to hook up and test your fuel injection system. This basic kit is for those who already know quite a bit about fuel injection testing and are not going to require all the detailed video instructions. I do include two or three tip videos with a basic kit which will help you get started.